Hey guys, welcome back. I am Bradham73, and we're here with the Nikon D7100. Uh, if you're enjoying the episodes, please uh, give me a thumbs up and please like the videos and please leave your comments and questions. I'll try to address those in the future. Uh, so in this episode, we are going to start off looking at the HDR functions of the Nikon D7100, as well as some high ISO results and image noise in uh, low light situations. So let's get started diving into the camera menu and take a look at HDR. Okay, so here in the shooting menu, uh, we've got our uh, high dynamic range and currently it's highlighted. Um, depending on what your, whoops, depending on what your uh, menu setting is, or actually what your uh, image recording is set to, your image quality. Um, see, a lot of times I usually like to shoot raw, um, either straight NEF raw. Actually, let me see if I can make the menu a little bit clearer for you guys. Uh, a lot of times I shoot M uh, NEF raw or sometimes raw plus fine JPEG, um, but usually just straight up raw. Um, eight, uh, for HDR, you can't be shooting raw at all. It's not, unfortunately, it's just not compatible. So, um, you know, we want to get the best results as we possibly can. So we'll choose JPEG fine. And actually, let me go back. Let's just, let's say we're shooting raw and we come down to try to do HDR and, oh no, we can't do anything. So yeah, it's saying this option is not available at current settings and that's just because we have um, uh, raw enabled. So go back down to JPEG fine and we'll go to high dynamic range. So this will turn on HDR mode and obviously we see on and then series and then off. And so what um, on uh, single photo just means that um, it will take one photo and it will shut off. It'll actually revert back to off mode essentially. So um, it'll do one photo in HDR. Uh, if you turn series on, it basically just stays in um, HDR mode and then you actually have to come back in and manually turn it to off. So uh, let's do a series and let's see. and then here's the other thing too. And the, the Nikon manual is not very specific on what actual HDR strength does. Now what it what it does do is it will take two it takes two photos, one at a lower you know, a, a darker exposure and one at a lighter exposure, and then it it will combine those two. Auto uh, mode essentially looks at your your entire image and it tries to compose the best uh, you know the best result it can with those two images um, however you can also select um, extra high high normal and low and and I'm just assuming that it's you know low is going to be a smaller uh, you know exposure uh, value between the the darker, more darkly exposed image and the more lightly exposed image. Um, and, you know, ex high and extra high is probably going to be a larger uh, difference in exposure value. So um, let's, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to play around with, uh, with the, uh, the couple settings and we'll come back and we'll take a look and see what we've got. Okay, guys, welcome back. Um, let's see here. Okay, so we've got a really exciting, really amazing scene right here. <laughs> um, I know it's not really the most interesting to look at, but um, it was something quick and easy that I found, uh, and it would be able to uh, convey uh, the use of the HDR for certain situations. And uh, by that, we have the uh, you know very brightly, lightly colored uh, building, uh, which you know has direct sunlight on it. And we've got, you know, kind of like a darker scene down here. And uh, another thing I want to kind of point out to you in advance is this moss that's growing up the side of the building. And I want you to kind of pay attention as we move through this, um, how the, that moss is actually uh, affected by the HDR process in the Nikon, you know, in the Nikon camera. <clears throat> so again, uh, I, I am going to point out that... Um, 
the camera can only do JPEG, so there's no raw. So there's you know there's not really a whole lot of um, processing that we can do. Uh, you know, obviously you can, you know, with Photoshop and Lightroom and things like that, but uh, not as much control as you would have uh, with a uh, a raw file. So um, this was just a, a reference shot. Uh, second one was a, a slightly adjusted reference shot here. Um, I was shooting, I don't know why I was shooting at ISO 1000, but uh, uh, I thought I had had it set for 100, but I must have looked and set it for 1000. I don't know really what I was thinking there. Um, so, I mean, if we look in at the, at the image, uh, we do see a little bit of, of, uh, grain here at ISO 1000, you know, in the background, you know, there's really no grain. It looks really, really good, really sharp. Um, so anyway, I got those two reference image photo, uh, using the auto setting. So, you know, it, it has brightened up, you know, the darker areas a little bit. I mean, if we just flick back and forth. Um, you know, we can definitely tell that the image is, is a bit more usable. Uh, it's a bit closer to what the, uh, you know, what your eye would see if you're actually standing there. So this is the auto setting. Um, the, you know, it brings out a little touch more blue in the sky, but not really too much. And also you can kind of see how that, that mossy area there on the left, uh, is brightened up a bit. Now this is the uh, this is actually the ultra high setting, so we can see a lot more definition. Uh, you know, it's really brought out that moss, <laughs> that mossy effect there. Uh, we can really see how it's kind of uh, tried to brighten that up. Uh, it's also brought out some more detail in the wall here, and obviously, you know, down here in the really dark areas, things are a lot brighter. And uh, one thing that I want you guys to notice is this, you know, right here where the light and dark transition is, there's a, a bit of a gradient here. And, and that is part of that high dynamic range um, shift, I guess, you know, for lack of a better term, uh, that you see in HDR photos. We have kind of like this gradient going from dark to light and maybe a little bit darker down here at the bottom. Um, you know, it's not really indicative of what you would see. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know exactly. Mm, I guess I'd have to do some more, you know, experimenting because I don't really know exactly how often that, you know, something like this is going to occur. If you're going to have these kind of transitional effects, you know, from light to dark, um, you know, in a lot of different photos. Um, again, this is not really true, you know, hardcore HDR. It's just an in-camera process JPEG between two images. So, you know, if we're doing HDR on the fly, yeah, I guess it's fine. Um, I don't know if I would use this setting, but I'll have to do some more experimentation, I guess, and, um, and report back. Uh, the next setting is the high setting. Um, and this is actually pretty good. It's pretty balanced. Uh, I don't see the gradient here. Uh, the dark areas are still uh, brought up and overexposed. I mean, if we just go back, kind of look. Yeah, this one has a very, very good, very balanced image. Um, and I think it's probably one of the better examples, um, you know, of this, uh, of the HDR function. Uh, next, we have the normal setting, um, and obviously you can see uh, uh, things are a lot darker, and then the lowest setting here, which, um, you know, almost looks like, you know, the reference shots without you even using HDR. So, you know, the, the normal and the high mode, I think, are both very usable. The, the ultra high maybe for certain situations or maybe uh maybe for shots where you have i don't know a different delineator between light and dark uh where the you know this transition isn't going to be quite as apparent um you know i definitely in the ultra high if you look at the sky uh you know it definitely brings out a little bit more blue in the sky which is nice but uh the high and you know possibly the normal is going to be the the best 
setting. And again, I mean, this this is very, you know, it's pretty good HDR function, um, I guess. You know, you, you start we've started seeing HDR and you know iPhones and I'm sure Galaxy phone, and Android phones and um, you know a lot of consumer point and shoots and this you know it's coming up to a DSLR so I'm sure it's just a natural progression of features that have that are added to cameras uh, wasn't something that I had on my uh, Nikon D7000 so having it on the 7100 is is you know one more tool in the tool bag um, again I don't know how uh, you know I don't know how often I'm really going to use it um, is it a is it a gimmick? Is it a sales gimmick? Um, I'm not too sure. Um, you know, you know, people that are more in amateur photography might find it more useful. Um, I didn't. I personally did not buy, nor did HDR have any bearing on my purchasing decision for the D7100. Uh, I bought it for, uh, you know, other reasons, um, and also the actually I did. I, one of the main selling points for the D7100 was the, the five-point bracketing. And for people who want to get into HDR, bracketing is really where it's at. Um, with, the, with the D7100, uh, you're going to have five, uh, five, up to five uh, bracketing uh, exposures. And I believe those can be separated by an EV of uh, up to three. So I think it's one, two, or three, uh, if I remember correctly. So you can have a uh, an EV difference of up to 12, you know, exposure values. You know, from you could have a minus six all the way up to plus six if you want. So uh, for doing, you know, true HDR, you know, uh, where you're taking multiple pictures and stacking them and processing them later in Photoshop or, you know, your photo editor of choice, um, you know, the bracketing functions of the camera are really going to be uh, you know, your biggest tool, I think. So, you know, this is something that's more of a basic HDR. You know, if you're on the run, you're, you're getting a shot where you're kind of frustrated over, um, you know, the, the lighting conditions or something, and you just want a quick HDR photo. Um, yeah, this is definitely going to be something that I think is useful. And who knows, I might come back and, you know, and, and post in the future about how much I love, absolutely love this feature of the camera. Um, so let's see. The next thing I want to uh, talk about is uh, high ISO, and I've had you know several people ask about the ISO performance and noise and and grain, and so I came down here uh, to this uh, street corner in a town uh, kind of near where I live, and um, you know I, th I decided to uh, uh, you know shoot some you know, images so that we could come back and we could look at those together. And uh, so I could kind of show you, uh, you know, the ISO performance of the camera. So we started off here. Um, I just took this reference shot and I actually moved down the corner. So this is going to be the only shot that's dramatically different. Um, looks very good. Looks very clean. Um, you know, nothing to really complain about overall. Um, I'm going to zoom in uh, to 100% um, where we can really start to see the uh, film grain or, or the you know the noise uh, from the high ISO, high ISO. Now this was shot at 6400, and one thing I'm going to kind of come back to is right here in the center we kind of have a brick. It's right on the corner of the building, and right now you know if we zoom in, I'm going to zoom in. This is 200%. Um, we can't really read what it says. Uh, we know that something's there, but we're not really sure what it says. Now, again, this is blown up to 200%, so we're really pixel peeping. Uh, but you know, you can you can definitely see there's noise there. It's not terribly bad. I mean, trust me, I've seen way way worse. Um, but you know, the noise is present. You know, as we look around the image, and we get some off the light there. You know, a lot uh, under underneath the the lip here of the building, um, but you know, still things are 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 quite sharp. Um, and I would say, you know, comp even compared to my D seventy one, or I'm sorry, my D seven thousand, it's a lot more usable. Um, and I was getting a lot, a lot more noise uh, with my D seven thousand than this. I mean, it, I'm I'm truly amazed at the result. 
Um, so let's move on down the road. Um, this is now shot at ISO uh, 100. Uh, let's see, this one's at 3.5. Okay, this one is at f8. And um, so let's let's go back and look at that little brick. And now we can clearly read uh, that it says Garfield and Main. And I'm gonna zoom in. Uh, now th again, this is 200% uh, zoom, so this is actually uh, pictures. The pixels are larger than it than they would normally be. But you know, we can clearly read that that says Garfield and Main. And hopefully on YouTube, uh, you'll be able to to see that as well. So we, if we bump back out to 100%, this is uh, you know the pixels as they appear. Uh, you know, we can we can read you know the push button push button for uh, you know the crosswalk kind of you know the little crosswalk sign we can we can read kind of read that um, you know everything is very clearly defined the the pattern on the, on the brick looks exceptional um, really everything you know the, 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 the telephone wires or whatever they are up here uh, are looking good um, I'm I, I mean, really, compared to the D7000, uh, I'm really, really impressed. We're not quite, we're not really getting the, the noise off the lights or, you know, really over here, um, you know, where we have kind of these light rays. Um, let's see, let's go over and look at the other side of the image. Uh, you know, we're getting these little starburst patterns, but, you know, nothing really major. Um, you know, the, the image looks really nice and clear. Uh, we are getting these really weird kind of reflections. Now, this is... Uh, some light trails from a car that drove by and these little dots right here that that we see there they shouldn't be indicative of um, an issue with the the way the camera captures the picture I believe those little these little jaggedy lines here uh, hopefully you'll be able to see those there's one right there kind of through here through here um, I believe those uh, were coming from some uh, street lights or lights from a business that might have been off to the right here that were reflecting on cars uh, as they drove by. So since we were doing long exposures, you're probably going to see a little bit of that here um, here in the episode. Um, unfortunately, I don't really have a lot of tools right now to, to really bring out um, you know, a lot of the, the darker areas. Uh, Adobe Photoshop is still uh, not compatible with the D7100. Uh, Hopefully here in the next month or so, they'll update Adobe Camera Raw so that uh, so that we do have uh, that. Um, but I do not believe the release, the current release candidate, uh, which is kind of like the beta version of Adobe Camera Raw, I, I still don't believe that it supports uh, the 7100. Um, actually, I think Nikon Rumors had it posted a week or two ago that it did, and um, uh, Adobe later came back and said, "Oops, you know, it was our mistake," and they they pulled the D7100 listing from the release candidate. So, kind of disappointed about that, but um, you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that they get that taken care of pretty soon. But getting back to the picture, I think it it really looks great. Um, let's see here, the next image. Let's see, we're still a little, you know, we're more overexposed here. Um, if we, you know, if we zoom back in, we take a look at our brick, you know, again, it's very clear. I mean, it's to the point, if we let's see, we go to 200%, um, we can even see the mortar around the brick, um, uh, you know, from, the, from across the street. Um, so, uh, you know, really, uh, really impressed. Uh, I mean, I can even see the wine bottles inside the store. And again, this is this is at ISO 100, and then we can see this ghostly man who is asking me what the heck I was doing, taking pictures of his restaurant. If we really want to, um, you know, crop in here, uh, we can see this. You know, there, we can see the faces of the people in the restaurant. It looks like there's a pretty girl in there, um, you know, eating dinner, or enjoying some wine, or you know, something like that. Um, so anyway. Uh, you know, very, 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 very impressed so far. Uh, we get a nice, smooth red brake light as it drives by, and also some smooth uh, headlights as, as the drive, you know, car drives down the road there. Um, let's see here. If we look up up here, um, you know, I'm not really seeing any. Uh, I'm not really seeing any. Uh, um, noise you know nothing to really speak of 
um, yeah, or, or at least nothing that that um, you know I wouldn't expect to see, you know, because of the really dark night shot. Um, but really, I mean, it, it, it really comes out well. Um, oh, one other thing. Let me zoom back in here to 1X. Um, got a little, you know, these little white dots here. I don't think those are hot pixels. Uh, I don't think that's uh, a defect in the CCD. I think those are actually uh, stars. Um, they do appear in most, if not all, the images, but I do believe those are stars. I kind of freaked out about that uh, when I first came and looked at the image because, you know, when I got the D7000, I had tons of stuck pixels. Red ones, blue ones, green ones, white ones, big ones, small ones. I mean, it was a nightmare. Not so on the D7100, um, very pleased so far. So okay, now we're back to ISO 100 after the guy went away. Um, let's see, now we're bumping up the four, ISO 400. Um, there we can still see our stars up there, or hot pixels, hopefully not. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to confirm that, but I'm pretty sure they're stars because you could see the streak uh, on the last image. Uh, the Garfield main sign uh, brick there is still very readable. Um, and we can still kind of see the faces in the windows back in the back there. Um, and we can still see them in there eating. Um, everything still looks very good. I mean, even the detail on the street uh, is just, you know, it's, it's very clear, very crisp. Um, you know, so far, I mean, this is the, this is the kit lens guys. This isn't like, you know, uh, you know, a, a high end Nikkor, you know, F 2.8, you know, I could, I could get, you know, I could pull out my 80 to 200 and do some shots with that sometime. But, um, and I'm, I'm sure I will in the future, but, uh, you know, uh, bricks and uh, grain start to pop in maybe a little bit up under here, but you know, it's still usable. Um, if we go to ISO 800, still usable. Garfield and Maine, I can still read that. If we go to 1600, now it's starting to get a little bit more fuzzy, you know, around the Garfield and Maine brick here in the center. Um, still, though, I mean, if we zoom out, picture still looks about the same. Um, you know, it's, it's being affected a little bit by cars driving by, but, um, still pretty darn good guys. Um, and let's see, let's jump up to 3,200 still looks about the same. And then, uh, this is 6,400 right here. So, um, you know, we can definitely see on the 6,400 there's, there's noise, uh, starting to creep in, but, um, we're going to drop that back down to ISO 100 because I want to look at my brick. Uh, so here is ISO 100. Now, again, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, but it is a, a 200% uh, crop at this point. So the pixels are larger than they would, they would actually be on screen. Uh, so we are going to see some uh, noise just, just from blowing that up. But I just wanted to kind of go through the image here. Okay, this is at 400. Hopefully we'll be able to get these lined up here. Um, this is 800. So we go back to 400, 100, 400, 800. Starting to get fuzzier. Uh, 1600, a lot fuzzier. 3200, quite a bit fuzzier, but still the, the, you know, the noise is fairly balanced. And then finally, uh, 6,400, you know, so we're, we've lost the definition of that mortar around, you know, around that, uh, uh, sign there, but, you know, still very good. Very, very good. Oops. There's our stars up there. Um, back to 6,400 here. Let's zoom back out. Actually, I want to see let's see if we can go up here and see our stars or our hot pixels. <laughs> yeah, see, there's the stars right there. 
you know, or at a much faster shutter speed at 6400 so that it didn't capture as much light. So, yep, yeah, definitely stars. And, and again, we can see, um, let's see, we are at 200. Let's back out to 100. You know, we can see noise there. I mean, that's that's noise. Um, but it's it's really balanced. I mean, it looks like film grain, uh, you know, to my eye. And, uh, you know, everything in the picture, I just think, you know, looks, I, for ISO 6400, it looks amazing um, uh, to me. I mean, okay, there might be some people out there that are watching this video right now who <laughs> am impressed. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. Um, this is just another scene along the road here. Actually, this is kind of a, oh, we're still cropped in here. You know, just another scene looking down the road here. Um, got a nice smooth light trails car turns in guys I'm really impressed um, I'm really loving the 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 7100 I was out taking some shots of the dog the other day and the only reason I'm not showing you is because uh, I shot them all in JPEG instead of raw uh, uh, I think I, I think it was because uh, I just wanted something quick and easy and uh, you know because the uh, uh, Nikon camera raw was not supporting the uh, you know the the 7100 yet so anyway I, t I took some pictures of of her and uh, uh, and I don't know I might bring those out in the future sometime but but overall guys very impressive um, I am thoroughly thoroughly extremely happy with the results uh, of the D7100 so far I haven't really really the only thing I've run into that I thought was an issue um, was the exposure indicator in the viewfinder and uh, when you when you first pick up uh, your D7100 um, the exposure indicator was actually reversed from what I was used to so um, you know when when I want to oh I guess increase the shutter speed you know I do it with my thumb dial uh, which I believe is the default um, Usually increasing the shutter speed uh, is a, a thumb movement from right to left on the on the dial and but uh, they had the uh, the negative and the positive reversed on the you know the exposure indicator inside the viewfinder and I'm I thought oh my god this is like the first Nikon camera I've ever used where the the you know that's come factory default with that reversed. Um, and I was praying to God that it uh, that it was something that was easily fixable, and, and of course it was. I and I put it right in, you know, went into the manual frantically looking how to change it. So, so um, you know, for those of you that that may have come from older Nikon cameras that um, had that type of, you know, you know the the I guess the exposure indicator that I'm used to, and you jump into the D7100, you might be a little bit surprised off the bat, but it is something that you could change. Um, thankfully so that's really the only kind of hit, even slight hiccup I've had so far and aside from not being uh, not having the tools to use uh, uh, you know Adobe camera raw um, you know I'm still impressed I mean my gosh this this looks amazing I might actually have to trek down to downtown Cincinnati uh, sometime in the near future and just try to do some night shots maybe across the river um, you know things like that so so guys um, this is you know these the, you know this was the uh, HDR and some high ISO results from the Nikon D7100 if you found the video uh, useful or helpful uh, please like it please give me a thumbs up um, it, you know it helps me uh, get more exposure and, and please subscribe for more videos and even share it you know feel free to share uh, the video, you know, with friends, uh, or you know, on, you know, if you've got a blog or if you've got a website, and you want to share the video, then then by all means, please do so. Um, just helps me get more views, and and um, you know, that makes me want to make more videos for you guys. Um, and I think as if I mentioned before, um, if you guys have any uh, questions or if you have any specific questions or comments about the Nikon D7100. Uh, please post those in the uh, you know down in the comment section. Um, you can also send me a, a private message as well if you'd like. 
um, you know, if you if there's something that you want me to address, and I will. I'm, I'm I am I am going to try to respond to as many um, uh, user questions as I possibly can because I want you know I want to learn along with you guys. You know, in ph photography, like anything, uh, you know, we're constantly learning. You know, we're learning new cameras and um, and new ways to create uh, photographs. And um, uh, so, you know, I'm here with you guys. So. If there's anything I can do to help you understand or, you know, if you've got some advice for me, then please, you know, leave a comment and let me know. I really, really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much. Um, and we will see you hopefully in a future episode. I'm sure we will. Thanks for watching once again and bye for now.